is the year we're not able to comfort one another the same way that we used to, even know that they need it. It is a year of visioning of what we have given up and what we have lost. The same things that we all have been kind of, the same things that we're, we have all been kind of focusing on on All Saints Sunday. We remember the baptiz, baptize on how those three beautiful children are welcomed into God's family. But it's hard to know this of all the people that have died this year and all the people that we have lost. When we talk about loss and we talk about grief, we talk about all those emotions that overpower us. We talk about how sometimes when we are grieving, we feel anger and we feel resentment and we feel depression. We feel that we need to barter and say, if I could just have this little piece, just this little more time with them, it will be okay. We have all those emotions that we carry because we are simply human. We are not enough alone. And those feelings that we have might result in behaviors that aren't normally what we do. Or we think about things that, hey, that might not be what I normally would think of. But when we have those emotions, those are kind of the things that happen to us. And we have to remember that we are only human. And that through the grace of God, we are enough. And so let's talk about of those emotions today. On how much we have lost this year. When, as a 31-year-old, I haven't lost my parents. I haven't lost a brother or sister or a close family member of mine. I have lost uh, great-grandparents, and, and those days were really sad, but I was able to rebound pretty quickly. But, and so I couldn't, you know, on All Saints Sunday, I would have kind of felt like an amateur. Maybe not the right person to be preaching you today. Because I simply have not lost someone that was near and dear to my heart where I've had a long-staying relationship quite yet. But I feel this year, of all years, I can, find, I can kind of articulate what does losing really mean for us. And I remember just thinking to myself and talking to my wife about the frustrations that I have about the worry of what's going to come next and when will things become back to normal. Remember when before all this hit, before March, when we, were, when we sometimes would think, man, I wish people would just be normal and how much we would give to get be at that place right now. You know, I am thinking about, you know, our Sunday school and our confirmation and our worship together and how we have dwindled down to a small worship size here in our church because people are making the decision to stay home and stay safe for what their needs are. It is things that are important and those decisions are valid and I completely understand, just like you all understand, but it is still not the same. And all we think about is how much we have lost. And so I ask you, where is the hope that God gives us in the midst of this loss? Where is God? Where is God's light in the world? In the, script, in the gospel today, where was God working through us? And why did this happen to us? Why are we not able to be together the way we have? You know, thinking about those questions, and they're kind of big questions. I can't answer all of them today, but I'll start to scratch the surface a little bit. 
I think about those times where my life was transitioning into a new normal. You know, those times, maybe graduating from high school, graduating from college, getting married, maybe even getting your first car, maybe buying a house or moving, or moving into a nursing home or assisted living. Those are all times where we've all kind of felt the grief of what our new normal our, what our old normal was and what our new normal is becoming. And that process isn't very nice or very easy, is it? You have all those anxieties of what's going to happen to us. And also you are focusing on what you have lost when that life, when your life is transitioning. And so those are the times where I feel God at most at work in my life. You know, I feel my soul through my heart. I feel that when I feel guilty or sad, that I kind of have an open wound in my heart. And I kind of feel God's love coming into my soul and telling me that it's okay to not be okay. Think about that. It's okay to not be okay. God is not asking us to just sweep everything under the, wa- the rug, pull our big boots up, and to keep on going. That's not our God. Our God is saying that I want you to be vulnerable. I want you to rely on each other through our means of communication. And boy, have we been blessed with things like Zoom, phone calls, texting, even though, even though those might not be the same as face-to-face contact, that we're able to communicate with one another. God is, God is asking us to be vulnerable and to admit to ourselves that we are broken human beings, that we are not able to do this alone, and to allow him to walk alongside us in our journey of faith as we continue to transform and transition into that new normal. When I moved here in Jamestown, it wasn't the easiest process for me. It wasn't because of Jamestown. It wasn't because of the church that I was called to. I was very excited about those things. To be honest, one of the things that was really hard for my wife and I is we lost someone very special to us two weeks before we moved up here. And someone that was living close to Jamestown. And someone that we were really excited to have that relationship with once we moved here. And so for months and months when I accepted that call at St. John's, that new reality was coming into fruition, that we would be coming here into this beautiful town, and I was going to be a part of this congregation that was going to uplift uplift a first-call pastor, and we were going to have that friend with us that has known us for years and years and years. And she was tragically lost. And I felt that hole in my heart. That first year of rediscovering that new normal was extremely difficult. And I couldn't just pull myself up from my bootstraps to get by. One of the things that happened that year was that the person that we lost was someone connected to the Lutheran, our Lutheran church, the ELCA. And there was a retreat every year that pastors take, and we all come together. And it's a way for us to uplift each other and to learn from each other of what would happen in that previous year. And every time during that retreat, we would light a candle of all the pastors that have passed away and are ascended that year. Most of them are retired. And I remember when we lit a candle for our friend. I remember lighting that candle for a friend and being reminded of God's presence in my life. It didn't take away the pain. 
didn't take away the resentment, didn't take away the anger, didn't take away the frustration or the fear, or even the feeling of being lonely. What it did is it allowed me to admit that I am not okay and to authentically process it and allow God into my heart. That is where true transformation and change for the betterment of ourselves is at work. When we allow God to be a part of our life, even in the midst of hopelessness, even in the midst of darkness, even in the midst of frustration and resentment, that God through God is that beacon of light and hope to the world and the light and hope to ourselves. And so I want to just open, I just want to invite you guys to think about your resentments. I want you to think about the times where you're frustrated or the times where you didn't think life went exactly as planned as you as thought. And you guys are all older than me. I know all of you have those. Because we all do. We all do. I want you to think about all the things that you are frustrated for, all the things that you are angry for, all the things that you are fearing today. And I want, and I want to light a candle for all of us. This candle represents us today opening our hearts. This candle today is representing us allowing God into our life, allowing God to walk alongside us in our journey and to remind us that we are broken human beings, but through the grace of God, you are enough. In your name we pray. Amen. Together with the whole church, let us confess our faith through the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. In our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord is the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and unspotted church. We acknowledge one baptism from the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. At this time for our offering, I just uh, given the opportunity to remind you that that we have uh, white buckets on either side of the hallway um, to drop in your offering. There are two offering, offering spots, uh, one for the general fund and the other for that specific mission that Atonement has designated this week. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us from this rich food and drink and send forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world through the bread of white life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. For each uh, 
prayer that I give when I end each prayer with, Lord, in your mercy, I invite the congregation to respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, we invite those who feel most unworthy and love to, to a seat at the head of your table. Through the humility and vulnerability and repentance of your church, bring a compassionate welcome to all in need of your grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Sustaining God, guide all people of the earth through harsh extremes in the circles of creation drought and monsoon, blistering heat and freezing cold. Hold in your mercy all places where lives have been disrupted by natural disasters. Hear us, O God. Sovereign God, gather our country around in a share, in shared table this week during our natural election. Open fruitful dialogue between people of every political party, place, age, and socioeconomic status, so that we may discern the common good. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Merciful God, protect those whose human dignity has been denied and oppressed in our nation. Raise the voices of those who have been silenced and bring justice where power has been abused for personal gain. Hear us, O God. Loving God, accompany those in new, new and unfamiliar places who need an invitation to community. We pray especially for those who have recently moved to start their first year of college, a new job, or a ministry position in another land. Hear us, O God. Eternal God, you unite all the faithful in a banquet of your abundance. This day we remember all who now feast in your eternal presence, especially all who have died in the past year. Hear us, O God. Receive our prayers in the name of, the, of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I invite you to just start to peel back. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we remember... For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right. With the, with the body of Christ, this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat.
And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst. Guide by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen receive the blessing this day. Mother and God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. in peace and serve the Lord.